good many a time. So what I want to do is walk you through a piece of software that I think is really extraordinary for open source and software that are wanting to tell a story through photos. It's a very simple app that you can download for free for your Atari Mini or your Pager. It's called Sound Slides. Sound Slides and Sound Slides and Click. Now Sound Slides work with JPEG photos. The same kind of photos that you choose to do in your web development or it also will work in audio files. The same audio files that you can record with your phone or your iPad. And you can combine the audio file and the slide into a slide show that will work and that can tell the story. It can tell the narration or it will tell you what the actual content is going to be. Then, uh, now in this this screen capture setting on my screen, I will show you how to upload this to your website for free version and that will work as well. You can also, I'll also show you how you can actually export it to a video. Now somebody might say, well why can't I just use an app? Why can't I just use an app that I can download or a native video model on my computer? can, except this particular software is designed for having something like a viewer to be able to step through and look at images or pictures or text and have it come back up on the web. So it's, it's a really nice um, thing to be able to take home for sure. So let's get into this and I will get to it in a minute here with a couple of photos for you. Now this is SoundSlides. This is the website. It's SoundSlides. Dot com and at SoundSlides, it has you have uh, you know basically you've got uh, three versions available. You have a free version that is exactly for your iPad. You can buy something for that just like you would a regular video app, and it has basically everything you could want. Then it has a basic file that you can download uh, for thirty bucks, and then there is the software pair, which has The, the irony here is uh, the basic sound slides for $40 is just a slideshow. It has no audio. The free version actually has audio. It's just like the pro version except that it's grounded. So I tell people just to get the free version and you're good. The grounded thing comes up first. That second thing goes away. And I could do that for myself. So it's a, it's a great um, available tool for you and you just have to download it and it has the slide file right, right here and click on it and it will come up and you can really test it and it does work. Now, so let's, uh, let's open up the download and so we'll open it up and it'll bring you into a dialog box that looks like this. And it's gonna say create a project new or old load a project we want to create a project so we're going to click create and then it asks you to name the project this is really just going to name the folder to store all of your files so we're going to call this demo and we're going to put this right on the desktop to be able to load JPEG and sound slides and then to customize it to as you look at the slide show. Now this is important right here because this is going to give you the, the, the output of your slide show. And if you have a very small blog, then you need to make sure you have this kind of thing right here. If you have a blog like mine where I have uh, a width of about 700 pixels wide, you want to make sure it fits that because you don't want your blog big or too small. So this is where you change it. You just double click the name, which is 700, and then click here and then go and click on demo. And it will put it in there. It's 700 pixels wide. Alright, and 
then you want to enable full screen. Now, this is a little tricky because we want to be able to let people to look at this full screen. Most people actually don't, I find, but the option is there if they want to look at this too. And so I upload the images um, in the slideshow at 72 BPM, but let's just put it at 300 BPM. I don't really think too of that for the moment. But um, 1920 by 1080, and that will, that's the largest that Samsung will get. And I'll show you what happens when I do that. And it comes up and it's very large and it's full and it looks amazing. So, but right now we're going to um, click Go Ahead. We're going to go to desktop and then we'll find, I have all of my images stored in one place called Carbon. I'll just click run it now. Now, uh, this is assuming that you have your photos already uh, produced and you have some sort of an audio book. It could be a music, it could be just music, it could be a song, um, or it might be a more original one that I did not touch on in this video. Um, but that it's all done and um, you know maybe you have how long and it's going to be in two minutes or three minutes or whatever. I would not go much more than that in three or four minutes. anyway so go to where your photos are click open and then it'll start loading the images and I only have like 14 or 15 that I've done so I'm not really really got them um, full yet I have a total of about 60 photos that I have done all right so now those are loaded and then the next option is to load your sound file so it's the same thing you go in find your sound file and click open the window this is your workspace right here you can hear that uh, this is your workspace right here and your workspace is has your thumbnails of all of the photos that you've uploaded as well as uh, down here it actually has your audio there now unfortunately sound slide there's it is limited there are certain things it doesn't do well and one of the things it doesn't give you like a um, wave file that you can actually see down here uh, the music is there, you can hear it. And you then can adjust your images to how long you want them to appear and, and that way you can time you can time the uh, oops, you can time the music to the slideshow and it's quite easy and very intuitive. Now I want to go over some of the some of the windows here couple of the other options that I have in here down here. So we'll just start with the left here and work our way over real quick. So these are the slides and this is sort of the, the little gallery where you could do by yourself. And you can move these slides around and rearrange them. In fact, you'll want to. What I do, you there is a way to actually type uh, on in inside this thing and type titles and things like that. But they're they're dog ugly. They're really bad. So uh, I always create a title slide myself. So here you can see we have the barley harvest title slide. And um, just do that in Photoshop or some sort of editing software and put it there. Then you might want to have another slide. And notice these two are the same slide, but one has writing on it and the other one doesn't. That's because this one has information that I've put on there instead of using uh, instead of using the option of lower third which I could type in information on it's quite complicated to do so it's just kind of easier just to type in that slide and put it there and now here's the cool trick watch this so here's the here's the slide all right and as I as I play this slide you'll see that when the next slide, it just fades out, the next one comes in, it looks as if we're, that the, uh, that the text is actually spoken when it's the whole slide that's spoken. It's the same kind of trick you do with a PowerPoint um, uh, convention. You see? And you could do that with others as well. So here's, um, I'll just play the uh, spring one and I made a slide here and then I have this slide here to where when her name comes up, uh, when 
they were wrong, and then they were flat and wrong. purposely added a portrait mode for the vertical slide for animals. Do you notice that all these slides are horizontal? I have a personal preference that if I am making a slide show for a electronic media, electronic media generally is the exception that breaks the rule. So in the headphone world I know that it's meant to be viewed that order. If if you see what happens here, when, when we play this, you get this effect of what they call blind doors on each side of the window. And it just, it ruins the flow. Now, you can zoom in and do it that way, or you can just remember when you're taking the photo that you can see them all and they're Let's go on to the next window, slide info. Now the slide info is um, is where you can add captions to your picture. So let's find some, let's, let's see, here's one of them. So we'll type in here caption um, is for our phone now. And we'll say wireless called Sony the the there we go all right so there's your title nothing great uh, but you'll you'll see later I'll show you how this caption is built in then you have the option underneath here under slide info details and or movement to do what in the Mac world they call it a pin range effect and zoom in zoom out a lot of people like that personally I don't slide sequence. Then we have a window that has a template. Now this template is, when this is all done, it's going to export this as a visual file on a, a, a web page. And you may not be using that web page, but you can if you want. And, and if you come in here to draw file link to this web page, or you can choose to embed this into the web page either way um, but if if you choose to link it then you'll have this big page with this slicer on it this is what this is so you have a header and the header is the title of your slideshow let's go ahead and type in here a little bit of text um, I usually don't show the header because I put my slides in the header but in the middle I have the whole give it give it give it give it um, center and edge Show controls, definitely want to have the controls. Even if you embed this, it's hard to use the the, the, the control footer. Uh, that shows captions, shows the credits. You want those. Um, you don't need to show size and things like that. So show caption by default. Sometimes you might want that. I usually keep it off. Thumbnail menu. Um, I'll show you how that works. I like to have that. Play automatically. Definitely don't want that. Scrub preview, I'll show you that. That's really fun. And then you show that in the slideshow center. That's really fun to have that in there. So, all right. So that's that one. Then uh, we can actually change colors as well. Let's put any red in here. Let's change the color of this to red. So that's the big one. Let's say uh, I want this to come out. Transition shell, um, on the transition, I tend to leave it in crossfade. You can get shortcuts in the, in the menu. You 
you have the option down here to change your um, to change your um, transitions individually. So if you don't want the default one, you can go to something else, and you can make those. Um, set this is up to two seconds so that's what we're doing okay then there's this option called shell this is very important under all these options you have here go for the ISO HTML5 if you don't choose that and you choose any of these other ones they look nice on the web but they don't play on your mobile app and there are so many people with iPhones and iPads but um, you know for whatever reason Apple doesn't have all these other uh, browsers, this is not what you would want. But it will play on your iOS device if you're on it. So view sets favorite, world mobile, not the world one, I don't think it's that interesting. So leave out of that one. Okay, project info. For whatever reason, you can always default to the world one, but I think it's kind of like being on Android for you. put your credits here. Here's a little trick. If you want a copyright sign on a Mac, just uh, option G and it gives you a copyright sign. All right. And then let's say 2015. Okay. And then you want to call, you put the music up here. This is where if you wanted to change your audio, let's say your audio was too long after your after you uh, recorded your video, your audio was too long. You can edit your audio in your original your original audio and then re-upload it, re-record it into a pro into a good pro bar so it looks nice if you're on if you're on your Mac. Or you can just call it G. Alright, that's basically this. Now I want to show you one more thing. Go back here. This is how, let's say you got too many slides you, or you got one without enough of them. You can take that little trick and just kind of like change it up a little bit. So now we have these all set up. Everything's fine and dandy. We're basically ready to uh, to go here. So um, up here, um, you have some options I'm going to go over here in a minute. But I, first I want to show you, um, if you're trying to get your slides to fit in a certain spot, Let's say there's a narration and you want a word to happen at a certain time in, in that particular slide. You may you can move these slides around. When you do, the slide to the right is the only one that changes. This can be good and can be bad at times. So just be advised about that. And you might have to then make other ones longer and shorter and just keep working your way down the line with, with that. Um, if you... Remember this one. There's a lot of text here, right? This may take 15 to 20 seconds to read this text. So if we if we make it around 15 seconds, which would be if this is 15 seconds, that's going to be about that big. Okay, or maybe a little less. Then we don't need another version of that same slide to be going on for another 10 seconds. So I take this slide after I have something like this or um, say – this, I'll take the next slide and I'll make it kind of short. Um, so for this one, I will make this slide quite short so that when you're looking at it and you play it, it has the long enough time to be able to read what it says, and then when it fades, it doesn't stay on for very long. Okay, another little trick for you. Now, let's say that, that you've got all these things you know, worked out to the nth power, and everything is cool, but you have like a bunch of this extra stuff down here, and they're and they're all sort of different lines, and you'd like some consistency. Well, here's a cool thing: set your cursor on the last slide that you want, that it, that you don't want to change. Then come up here, and under Tools.
you have spread into that weekly and you spread your main images weekly. And if you spread images out weekly, it's going to spread all the images and post that to those and get those images weekly. So we don't want that. We want all the rest of the main image to be full so we have those first main images and those little arcs. So we hit that and we hit that. So we want to do it in a rough fashion. And then now all the rest of them are empty. So we're not so that's that's kind of a nice filling in for us to show you how to do that. All right, then one last thing before we wind up here. Under um, under modifying, you have all these options here. One of them is lower thirds, and you can actually put lower thirds of your text or bold. You know, in in um, in news reports where they have the person the name of the news channel. So if you're interviewing someone, they say the mayor of of New York or whatever lower thirds so you have the option to just leave it at that but you have this other thing right here advanced parameters okay under advanced parameters it stops right here at that that shell folder on the left side of the screen the ios and the mac folder the ios and the ios folder okay now if we want to analyze we need to do something in fact let me show you first I'm going to give the text of this show to show you what we get. We hit the, so let's say, what do we say? When we hit text, the text opens up the show in the browser. And there we go. There's our show. And it's all hunky dory. And I'm going to go through all this little stuff. But first I want to show you the full screen option. If we hit full screen, this is supposed to go to 19 frames. Remember? You see, it's not 19 frames. In fact, it's it's more like maybe 950 or 1,000 or something like that. But we want 19 frames. We want 2,000 pixels, and that's not working. So how do we get that? Let me take that up. The way we get it is over here under this modifying advanced parameters. We're going to come over here. We're going to hit add, and we're going to hit that twice. And that's going to give us two empty little bottom options right here. And, uh, and I'm going to just put in, you know, copy and paste because it's easy. It's not the best thing to remember every name of every button. So if you're going to type in there max underscore full screen underscore width, and then the width remember is the height, right? And then the next one you're going to do is try the same thing. The next one is going to be um, max underscore full screen underscore height. And that one goes what? So we've got that, and now if we save, and then we hit Enter, and we hit full screen, bingo, it's big. Now, you see how this is small right here, though? Um, that's because we need to resize, um, I believe that the reason it did that is we need to go back under here and redo our output size. And even though it's there, I think we just need to apply and let it reprocess the output. And that was under modify output size. And that's how we get this quick and big output. All right. Now, in theory, I don't want to get this one out of here. Let's go ahead and do that. There. Let's get it there. All right. So now you see it's nice and big. Now let's look at this slideshow and look at the actual thing because it's it's really nice. This is what I'm saying is it, you can do it with a video program, you know, um, but you're not going to get some of the effects that this is um, specifically designed to work with. So here you can see I was running my cursor and I drew a stretch output of what it would sound like. So that's one thing. Then you also have here's the obvious you know just show volume and then you have this this is um, your thumbnail index and you can jump to the slideshow using this and look at the different images now remember we talked about um, caption so here under show caption you know zoom and do all this stuff under show caption there's the caption, whatever that is, right? And then under 
Pharisees said it, they they said it to get a smile on their face and they left. And then this visit my blog is actually a talk link that you can make um, back sorry um, back under here under the advanced thing you'll you can create a extra link it's called and then put whatever link there and that will actually take you to the blog so that's sound flies and it's it's an amazing little app and we haven't really shown you how to incorporate it into your website and we're going to do that later because it's pretty this is already done really well but briefly what you're going to do is you're going to export this it's going to give you a publish to web file and you're going to rename that publish to web so um, you find it there it is and you might rename that blog is published but you're going to name it lowercase because this is actually going to be called url and barley underscore title and then you actually upload that file to um, your ftp file to your website and that becomes the front page on your blog or whatever um, and then um, that's how you connect it to your your website i will come back in another time and show you how to embed this into your blog so that it's much easier for you to to do that but that's sound flies sound flies plus and sound flies um, available at soundflies.com well worth it i'm not done with it and i'm going